Example 123. A sociologist claims that the average Hispanic teen male is engaging in intercourse before turning 17 years old. A 2008 study of 47 Hispanic males revealed that the mean age at which they had intercourse for the first time was 16.31 years old with a standard deviation of 1.78 years. Use a 1% significance level to test the sociologist's claim that the mean age for Hispanic males to first engage in intercourse is less than 17 years old. All right, so I'm gonna read this phrase here to test the sociologist's claim that the mean age, that phrase is indicating it's a hypothesis test and the claim is about a mean. So it's a hypothesis test for the mean. Okay, so let's do that then. We're going to write our claim down first. Our claim is going to essentially express the idea that they stated there in that last sentence that the mean age is less than 17. The mean age is less than 17. Then we'll have a corresponding H O H A for the problem. So our null hypothesis H naught and our alternative H A. Now, if you look at the claim, it has a symbol less than, right? That's the symbol it uses. That's a symbol that H A uses as well. So the claim and H A in this problem are the same. Now, H O would have to express the complement idea, which would be basically what's the opposite of this. So it'd be greater than or equal to 17. So this is saying that on average, um, Hispanic males are having sex prior to 17. This is saying they're waiting to be 17 or older to have sex. So these are our two competing hypotheses. Now we collect our data. Our data here will be n equals 2. So what's the sample size for the problem? It looks like they looked at 47 Hispanic males. Then they went on to calculate a sample mean for the group. It says that that was 16.31 years old, and the standard deviation, they say, is 1.78. And then they go on to give us a 1% significance level, so alpha is 0 0.01. All right, so taking this data, we're going to enter it into our test statistic now. Our test stat is going to be z equals 2. Remember z because the sample size is over 30, and we'll have x bar minus the mean from HO divided by the standard deviation over the square root of N. We have the sample standard deviation, we'll use it as a substitute for the population value. The sample mean is 16.31. We'll subtract off the mean here from the HO, which is 17, and then divide by the standard deviation and divide that by the square root of N, which is the square root of 47. Okay, let's put that all together in our calculator and see what it gives us. So we'll have 16.31 minus 17, close that up, divide by 1.78, and then, oops, I didn't put a parenthesis here, let me make sure I put my denominator in parenthesis, that's 1.78 divided by the square root of 47. All right, so close that up and hit enter, and you get negative 2.66 if you round it off to two decimal places. So it's approximately negative 2.66. All right, now that we have our test stat completed, our next step is to determine what kind of test we're conducting and find the critical value. When you look at the alternative hypothesis, that symbol will indicate what kind of test we're conducting. It's pointing to the left. This is therefore a left-tailed test. So let's draw a bell curve. and then we'll shade a left tail for that bell curve, and that will be our rejection region, right? Now we need to know what area is gonna be in that tail. It's gonna be the same as alpha in this case, because it's a one-tailed test, so we're just going to put the alpha here, so 0 0.01, that's where alpha goes. Now we're looking for the critical value. Don't forget it will be negative, so whatever number we get from the table, we need to make it negative here. And remember, this is going to be a z alpha value. No need to divide the alpha here by anything because it's strictly the pure alpha in one tail. So let's go look up 0.01 in one tail and see what that gives us. Okay, so we're looking at the value 0 0.01 in one tail, and we're going straight to the bottom. And we find the answer at 2.326. Okay, so we found the answer to be 2.326.
Of course, it's negative because it's on the left-hand side of zero here in the center. And now we're going to look to see where this test stat lands. Well, if you look at it, it's going to, on this number line, fall clearly in the shaded area here, right? Because 2.66 is further to the left than negative 2.326. And because of that, we're going to conclude that we should reject the null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis. Remember, anytime you land in the shaded area, you're rejecting the null. It's that hypothesis we're always testing. So we reject the null, and with that goes the idea of supporting the alternative. So we reject the null, we support the alternative, and the final step of the process is to look at these two statements and figure out which one is appropriate for our claim. So look at your claim, identify the symbol here, and say, hey, is that an HA symbol or an HO symbol? We know that it's an HA symbol, that's why the claim and HA here are the same. So the claim is basically the alternative hypothesis, so we should use the following wording when we finalize our statement and that wording will say that we support the claim. So the sample data supports the claim. The sample data supports the claim. And that claim is that the average age is under 17 for these Hispanic males to engage in intercourse for the first time. And so that's it. That's the end of the problem.